Greetings, students. In this video, we will cover questions number 63 through 67 on the most recent SHSAT handbook. Go ahead and grab a notebook and a pencil, and let's get started. For question 63, we have an exponent problem. 3 to the fourth power plus 7 to the fourth power is equal to, so we're going to go ahead and evaluate each of these exponents. 3 to the fourth power is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which is 81. Because 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81. 7 to the fourth power is 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. So let's evaluate. 7 times 7 is 49. And then we're going to multiply 49 times another 7. 7 times 9 is 63. 7 times 4 is 28. 28 plus 6 is 34. So we have 343 for 7 to the third power. Now we're going to multiply 343 times 7 one more time. 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 4 is 28 plus 2 is 30. And 7 times 3 is 21 plus 3 is 24. So we have 2,401. The question asks us to add these two numbers. So we have 2401 plus 81. And now we have 2482. So the correct answer is choice C. Make sure you practice calculating exponents and your multiplication. Let's move on. For question number 64, it says, in one week, one and three-fourths inches of rain fell on Monday, two and two-third inches of rain fell on Tuesday, and seven-eighths inches and seven-eighth inch fell on Wednesday. How many inches of rain fell during those three days? So this is a problem where we need to add up the amount of rain in all three days. So we have, so we have one and three fourths plus two and two thirds plus seven eighths. And when we add fractions, our goal is to get the least common denominator, also known as the least common multiple. So taking a look at four, three, and eight, we know that the common denominator is 24. So our goal is to rewrite each of these fractions with a denominator of 24. Four times six is 24. Therefore, I'm gonna multiply the numerator by six and we now have 18. Two times eight is 24. So I'm gonna multiply the numerator times eight and we have another 16. Three times eight is 24. So I'll multiply the numerator by eight and we have 16. And eight times three is 24. So I'll multiply the numerator by three and we have 21. Let's go ahead and add our whole numbers. So two plus one is three. And then we're going to add our fractions. So since all of these fractions have the same denominator, let's go ahead and add our whole number. So two plus one is three. And now we're going to add our fractions. Since they all have the same denominator of 24, we're gonna keep that denominator. And now we can add the numerators. So 18 plus 16 plus 21 is equal to, so 18 plus 16 plus 21 is equal to 55. This is not our final answer. We need to turn, we need to turn this improper fraction here into a mixed number. So 24 goes into 55 two times. So we have three plus two and seven over 24. So our final answer is five and seven over 24. And that is choice E. Let's check out number 65. Jamel works at a computer store. He is paid an hourly rate plus a 15% commission on all computer products he sells. So we have the hourly rate and we also have a 15% commission. Last week, he was paid a total of $802.50 for working 30 hours and selling $1,250 and selling $1,250 worth of computer products. What is Jamel's hourly rate? So our goal is to find the hourly rate and we're gonna call that H. So our goal is to find the hourly rate and we're gonna call that H. So a lot of times you don't need to write this on the SHSAT, but I like to define my variables. So let H, represent the hourly rate. And now we're gonna set up an equation. And now we're going to set up an equation. 
So, so since he worked, so since he worked 30 hours, we're going to have 30 times whatever his hourly rate is, plus 15%, that's 0.15 times some sort of, so we'll start off with 30 times H, which is the hourly rate, plus 15%, we're going to express it as a decimal, 0.15 times the amount of computer products that he sold, which was $1,250. And we know that when we add up 30H plus 15% plus 15 of the computer products that he sold, we should get $802.50. So we have our equation. Let's start simplifying. Let's start by multiplying 1,250 times 0.15. Hopefully you know your 15 times multiplication tables because that is gonna be a faster way to solve this problem. And we should also note that the final answer needs to have two decimal places. So keep that in mind. 15 times zero is zero. 15 times five is 75. So we put the five down here and we carry the seven up here. 15 times two is 30. And then we're gonna add seven. So that is 37. Put the seven down here and carry the three. And 15 times one is 15 plus three is 18. And remember our final answer must have two decimal places. So we're gonna go two places to the left. So his total commission is $187.50. So let's add this information to our equation. We have 30H plus 187.50 equals 802.50. Now we can subtract 187.50 from both sides. So we have 30H equals, so when we subtract, we have 30H equals $615. Our final step is to divide both sides by 30. So H equals 30, can't go into six, but 30 can go into 61 two times with the remainder of one. 30 cannot go into 15, but we can go ahead and add a zero and place our 15 right next to the zero. So now we have 150 and 30 into 150 goes five times. So Jamel's hourly rate is $20.50 per hour. So the correct answer is choice A. Question number 66. A revolving sign makes one complete revolution every 90 minutes. If the sign starts moving at 2.30 p.m., at what time will the sign complete eight revolutions? I just wanna make sure that you fully understand what is a revolution, because that might be new information for you, like new vocab. Uh, and I also want us to annotate our problem to identify the important information. So one complete revolution is happening every 90 minutes and it's getting started at 2.30 p.m. Like if you think about a coin, and I will put a little dot right here. Imagine rolling this coin and it starts at the top. And when you roll the coin on its side, it makes one complete revolution until the dot is back at the top. So that's what a revolution is. It's one complete rotation. So it's saying that one complete rotation takes, one complete rotation happens every 90 minutes. If there's going to be eight revolutions or eight complete rotations, we need to identify how much time has passed in total. So that would be 90 minutes times those eight revolutions, which gives us 720 total minutes. But we don't want to figure out minutes, we wanna figure out hours. And we know that 60 minutes is equal to one hour. So our goal is to convert minutes to hours. So hopefully you guessed it, that we're going to divide 720 by 60. 720 minutes divided by 60 minutes, that is going to give us the number of hours that's contained within that total. And we have 12 hours. It will take a total of 12 hours for this revolving sign to complete eight revolutions. So what is 12 hours after 2.30 p.m.? that's gonna take us right over to 2.30 a.m. So F is the correct answer. For question 67, points Y and Z are not shown on the number line above. 
If X is the midpoint, remember the midpoint is the middle of any line segment. So X is the midpoint of WY and Y is the midpoint of WZ. Where on the number line would where on the number line would point Z be located? Let's take a look. X is the midpoint of WY. So right now, to go from W to X is two units. So we're going to add point Y as two units away from X. It says that X is the midpoint of WY. So this is where Y is going to be located. And Y is the midpoint of WZ. So the distance from Y, so the distance from W to Y is four. Therefore, to go from Y to Z, it's going to be another four. So we're gonna have point Z positioned right here. The question is where on the number line would point Z be located? Notice point Z is now at position eight. So D is the correct answer. If you like this video, if you learned something in this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe, and let me know which concepts you'd like me to cover. See you in the next video.